Series opener, Red Sox against the Cardinals, and in the third inning, Redbird Lou Brock gets his second of four hits to equal a series record. At this point, it was a scoreless tie. Santiago delivers to Kurt Flood, who smashes a double, advancing the fleet-footed Brock to third base, and the Cardinals have been in scoring position for the third consecutive inning. Former Yankee Roger Maris bounces out to first baseman George Scott, but Brock scores. St. Louis won, Boston nothing. Pitcher Santiago ties up the ball game with a third inning home run into the screen atop the left field fence, making it one all. But Cardinal ace Bob Gibson shackles the Red Sox batters, allowing only six hits and striking out ten Boston sluggers, nine of them in the first five innings. This is the only run which prevents Gibson from pitching a World Series shutout. Fourth inning, Brock smashes a ground single pass short. Jastrzemski races in and fires home to nail Julian Javier trying to score from second. It's one of the fielding gems of the day. Brock singles to open the seventh, then steals second for the second time in the game. Flood bosses out to Scott, advancing Brock to third. Brock scores on Maris's infield out as the Cardinals win 2-1. But in the second game, Lomborg's one-hitter and Jastrzemski's two homers give Boston a 5-0 win. A bay in Greenland is the site for a new concept in the fine art of salvaging ships. Air-filled plastic balls are pumped into the hold of the sunken Danish freighter Martin S., a 2,400-ton vessel. The idea is the brainstorm of a Danish businessman and inventor who saw it in a comic strip. The balls create a lifting force of some 1,400 tons. And with the aid of a floating crane, the freighter begins its slow but steady rise from the briny deep. When the refloating project began, she was settled in 100 feet of water. After being refloated and trimmed for balance, the Martin S is towed across the Atlantic to Copenhagen Harbor for overhaul and further service. A triumph for a new salvaging technique. Mexican refugees who fled the fury of Hurricane Beulah await transportation home. More than 15,000 people are still being housed in schools and other public buildings. Army helicopters are loaded for the sentimental journey back to areas that were battered in a six-week deluge of heavy rains and widespread flooding. As the refugees returned to Mexico, Hurricane Fern struck the northeastern part of the country, touching off more heavy rain. Some flooding occurred at Tampico, but further floods were not expected on the Texas side of the Rio Grande, where Beulah raged. Thurgood Marshall, the first Negro to serve on the United States Supreme Court, puts on his robes with the assistance of his wife. President Johnson named Marshall to replace Justice Tom Clark, who retired. Justice Marshall, the great-grandson of a slave, swore to do equal right to the poor and to the rich as the Supreme Court opened its 178th term. Fifteen people die and more than 40 are injured in the derailment of a mail train in the West Bengal state of India. The engine and the first 12 coaches left the tracks after an early morning explosion. Victims' bodies were removed from the wreckage and the seriously hurt were treated at nearby hospitals. Sabotage by pro pekin communists is suspected when the incident occurs within a week of Sino-Indian clashes on the Sikkim-Tibet border not far away. Further cause for Indian-Chinese tension the last streetcar line in West Berlin closes down, and the passing is observed in a nostalgic, festival-like celebration. A sale of collector's items includes pieces of an old coach and other treasures of streetcar memorabilia, ranging from ticket punches to uniform buttons. A Tunaville set has a field day. A handsome mustachioed motorman presides at the final run of the last car, decorated with flowers for the special event. The Berlin Transport Association made sure that the dying moments of the tram system would be duly saluted. The 
passing of an era in the divided city as the tram heads slowly for the terminal and ultimate oblivion, while streetcar buffs say, Auf Wiedersehen. Buck Passer, third ranking money winner in racing history and horse of the year in 66, retires from competition at the age of four. Owner Ogden Phipps says an arthritic right foreleg is the trouble. The problem leg became inflamed after Buck Passer's defeat by Damascus in the Woodward. Farewell to a champion. The U.S. Grand Prix attracts the world's best auto racing drivers, including Scotland's Jim Clark, two-time winner of this event. Dennis Holm of New Zealand and his teammate, Jack Brabham of Australia, are 1-2 in the overall point standings for the World Championship. England's Graham Hill wins the pole position with best time in the trials. The 248-mile race is off to a fast start with Hill moving to the front as the pace setter. Jim Clark and Dan Gurney stay close behind in hot pursuit. Mechanical failures thin out the starting field of 17. Gurney with a broken suspension is among the dropouts while Clark takes the lead from Hill before the midway point. Jim Clark wins, averaging close to 121 miles an hour. Hill is second, but Holmes' third spot still gives him a wide point margin for the world title to be decided in Mexico City.